Well, the weather pattern this week is really going to start to change up. We have a huge ridge building across the center part of the country, and that's going to form a blocking pattern. And what'll be interesting is to see how this energy dives underneath it and how it interacts with another trough across the east. That could mean snow in areas that normally don't see snow. That could be warmth in areas that normally are freezing. It's a wild setup, no doubt. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by today. If you're a new viewer, thank you so much. We've got a lot of new eyes coming over to the channel. My name is Travis Roberts. Welcome. I'm a former TV chief meteorologist and I love winter forecasting. If you love following weather patterns and weather models, you're going to like the channel and I hope you can subscribe and keep up. We asked yesterday, what is your favorite weather where you live? What is your least favorite weather where you live? Today, a bit of a different question. It's going to be based on what the European model was spitting out yesterday. You know, it was a pretty wild look. It was trying to give us almost this super storm Sandy type look where you bring low pressure in here. Now, of course, Sandy was a hybrid tropical system. That's not what this is, but it's still retrograding a low into New York. And I just want you to know, I don't think this is what's going to happen, but the pattern is getting crazy and the model are having a hard time facing what's going to happen. And it got me thinking, a lot of people remember Sandy. What has been the most impactful weather that you've ever experienced? For me personally, probably the Superstorm of 1993 or the Storm of the Century, whatever you want to call it. It was incredible. But what about you? Where you live? What's been the most impactful storm that you've ever been in that you will definitely never forget? Leave a comment down below. I love reading your comments. I can't wait to see what you got to say, and I'll see you there. Here's where we are now. We've got this trough here in the east. This is actually what's bringing our system across the northeast with rain and snow. We've got another short wave that's diving down through the Great Lakes. That's going to bring rain and snow here to parts of the Great Lakes, down into parts of Ohio and Indiana, eventually even into the Mid-Atlantic. And it starts to deepen a little bit here too. Now, it's not going to be really doing much. There's not a lot of precipitation with this one. You can't miss this huge ridge building here across most of the country, all the way up into Canada, above average temperatures by a good 15, 20 degrees. And then here comes the storminess. This trough will dig into the west. That's going to mean a tremendous amount of moisture moving ashore. With onshore flow here, heavy rain moves back into Southern California and the southwest. And then we get a trough digging in here in the east. I mean, this is what I call a blocky pattern. It is almost very meridional. It goes north-south versus east-west. So when you get this, you start to see a very stormy pattern. And what's really interesting is by the time we get into the weekend, we start to see this trough here across the west, which is negatively tilted. Look what happens. It starts to push some of that energy underneath this ridge here. How will that interact with what's going on here in the northeast? Will we see interaction here? Well, that's why the European and I think these long range models are having such a hard time figuring out what's going to happen. There's so many players on the field. This is such a strange setup. I think there's a lot to watch this week and it's going to stay busy for sure. But let's start in the short term with what we're dealing with right now. Across the northeast, we've got snow and some rain showers starting to wrap up. It'll likely end as snow in some areas that are seeing rain by the time you wake up on Monday. Most of the heavy stuff out of the way, though, when we start to dry out as high pressure builds in. It'll be a little colder, though, in many of these areas. But here comes our system across the Great Lakes. It's an upper level short wave trough. Almost cut off low look here as that dives into the Great Lakes and parts of the Midwest warm enough that I think we actually could see mostly rain in these areas. Now I'm going to flip over and show you the NAM model. It's a little bit colder with this system as it dives in, showing more of a snow mix versus a rain snow mix. I do think we will see snow here into the mountains of Virginia, West Virginia, and the NAM is so cold it's trying to bring that snow almost to DC, definitely in the hills outside of DC just to the west, and then down even as far south and east as Charlottesville. I don't think we see that. In fact, I think the NAM might be just a little too cold, but that is definitely something that bears watching. Not a big snow. This is not the big one by any stretch. A couple of inches possible here. Bit of a break here along the Ohio River. That just shows you it's very marginal for snow. So temperature driven and likely elevation driven. And of course, the further north you go, it's colder. But once you start moving south, you are definitely elevation dependent here across West Virginia and Virginia. And then that's pretty much over. And once we get to Thursday, that system's pretty much gone. And then we've got the big system moving into the west. Here comes our trough digging in. Lots of rain and snow as far south as Southern California, the Four Corner States, Inland snow really starts to pick up into the mountains and that rain along the coast will be very heavy again in areas where we just saw flooding just a week ago or so. Rain totals across the west will start to pick up first in the Pacific Northwest as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday. Once you get to say Wednesday and Thursday, you start to see that rain spread down the coast. 
one, two, three, maybe even four inches of rain here in some areas, snow will be measured in feet. Now, it's going to take a little while for that snow to start to accumulate. I think we're fairly quiet here through, say, Tuesday. But look what happens as we get into Wednesday, now into Thursday, and then into Friday, we start to see that snow add up, especially back here in the mountains over the weekend. So lots of moisture to work with with that onshore flow across the west. Now, the afternoon European from today, nowhere nearly as aggressive as yesterday's that was showing that really strong low pressure off the east coast. I'm not sold that that doesn't happen because we still have a very strange weather pattern, but it looks like rain moves across the south. Here's our trough in the northeast. That actually will probably bring some snow as it moves in, as that cold air works in, say, Friday and into Saturday. But again, how does this system here across the south interact with what's happening here with this trough? Do they phase together? Do they interact in any way? You know, that afternoon European from today says no, but one thing's for sure, it keeps the moisture coming into the west with another round of rain and snow here. It could get crazy in the West in a bad way. So you'll want to stay tuned in that area too. Weather.gov, get any warnings and watches. You'll want to monitor that too, especially late in the week across the West. Now again, a tremendous amount of uncertainty. This is the GFS ensembles. Basically the ensembles take the forecast model data and it plugs in different parameters. You change or tweak something just a little bit. Of course, the further out in time you go, the more disagreement you get. That's why you're seeing a big snowstorm here for DC on this parameter. With this one, you're seeing nothing. With this one, you're seeing snow as far south as Georgia and South Carolina. This one, no way. This one, you put a snowstorm down into North and South Carolina. Here, nothing. So what I'm about to show you is the mean, the average. Now, it's going to show snow in areas that probably won't see snow because it's taking into account that those maps showed a chance of some snow. These ensembles are really good for kind of getting a big picture of what might happen. And I think there's just so much uncertainty seven, eight days from now. But the fact that we're showing... On the ensembles, snow here across parts of the south in some areas, I think you don't want to turn your back on it. I get a lot of comments asking me, what week will it snow in Alabama? What week will it snow in Mississippi, Arkansas? What about the second week of February for South Carolina? I don't know. And these models certainly don't know. Uh, I think anything past five days, six days is, is way out there. But I will tell you one thing's for sure. As I look at the long-term European ensembles and the European weeklies, I'm seeing cold. It looks like it's going to be below average heading, especially mid-February through March. And of course, March is warmer than January, but with an active weather pattern setting up, and it looks like it's going to be colder than average in many areas, that could mean more storminess, more winter storm chances. And the long range, 46 day snow totals from the European weeklies, this is mostly climatological, right? I mean, this is where we typically see snow, but the fact that we've not seen this go away with a blowtorch pattern setting up here tells us, look, winter is not done. It's the middle of winter right now. We've still got all of February and more than half of March officially. Meteorological spring actually begins March 1st. But if you love winter, let's let's not talk about that much. Let's move on. All right, that's all I got for today. Leave a comment below again. What is the most memorable weather event that you've ever been through? Could be a heat wave. Maybe it was a snowstorm, a blizzard, a hurricane. I'll see you in the comments. Have a great day.